Good morning, what's great to see today. It's Tuesday the 12th of April. I'm glad. I was I was going to start, but I thought, no, I better check, because I knew it was Tuesday, but I didn't have a clue what the date was. So it's Tuesday, it's the 12th of April, and um, uh, we are in Holy Week, which is great. And I trust you, you're having a good week. So this morning, we've just been shopping, got back here in Kent. The sun is shining. It's quite warm outside. I've got a T-shirt on. I just went outside the T-shirt. So yeah, it's quite nice. So um, as you said, yesterday we're continuing the devotion in the book of 1 Peter. Clicked over now to verse, uh, no, not verse, chapter 5. Be helpful if I could speak. That would be good. And uh, so, and it says, it says, advice for elders and young men. So if you go, so if you're an elder or a young man or aspire to be an elder, can't aspire to be a young man, but if you're a young man or if you're aspiring to be an elder, this really is for you. Um, <clears throat> this is Peter's advice. And for someone, I guess, who's kind of, who was known for, if you like, speaking his mind, perhaps putting his foot in it, that's what a lot of preachers say, how Peter was, his character. Um, maybe this is some good advice. Uh, I'm going to look at verses 1 and 2 today. Uh, and it says here, so it says, And now a word to you who are elders in the church. I too... I'm an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ. And I too will share in his glory when he's revealed to the whole world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you. Care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you'll get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. So there you go, he says, um, as a fellow elder. So so Paul's not saying, uh, Peter's not saying this as uh, Paul. <laughs> There's a clues in the name of the book, isn't it? He's called Peter. Peter's not saying this from a theory point of view, but he's saying this uh, from uh, from what he's experienced. So Peter would have been uh, an elder in the church in Jerusalem and probably around the place uh, for quite some time. So this is written, like I said, 60, 64 AD. Jesus would have, the church was established probably 30, 31, 32, somewhere around there, um, AD. So probably for some 30, 25, 30 years, he was, and he's talking here from experience. He said, care for the flock um, that God has entrusted to you. So care for those who God has entrusted. So remember, Jesus said to his disciples, just before he went up to heaven, he ascended to heaven, he said, he said, go into all this world. He said, all authority has been given to me, and I give this to you. He said, go into the world and make disciples. Uh, in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. So the aim is not to just to make converts, although obviously we want to see people come to faith, we want to see people, we want to see uh, people accept Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, but also that we want to see people um, who are discipled. And Jesus spent a lot of time with, the, he spent three years actually discipling the 12 disciples, and uh, to to input into them so they could grow and, and thrive and encourage and grow so to do the things that God wanted them to do. So we are called, if you are, if you are an elder or you aspire to be an elder, that doesn't mean to be an older person, an elder, the word there, elder, is, is also overseer. Overseer, someone who oversees other people. And... Um, and it's not that an overseer uh, is more important than, than someone who's in a group. It's actually, it's, it's not that at all because it, the Bible tells us God has no favourites. But what we do have, we do have different roles and responsibility. Like, you know, he tells us in Corinthians about the body of Christ. One is the hand, one is the feet, one is this, one is that, one is the other. We have different gifts, different roles to play. And one is not better than, than the other, you know. We all need each other because, you know, in my body, I need all the parts of my body. If if they're not working properly, then 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 all of me doesn't work. So today I've been walking. I'm going to go and do some exercises for sciatica on my knee because uh, my knee was hurting. I was walking around Morrison's and I was limping. My body wasn't working as it should be, and so I want to do something about that. And obviously that affects the whole of me, as because when I'm sitting down like uh, in the car driving, it gives me some pain. When I'm walking around, I'm limping. It's, I'm not functioning as I should. So find your place in the body of, of Christ and don't complain and say, well, I want to be like that. It's good to have aspirations of other things, 
but do serve well wherever you are, whatever you're called to do, whatever you're doing there. And you never know, you might, God might have other things for you. But if you are an elder or an overseer, which I would call it here an overseer, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly. Do it willingly, not grudgingly. Not for what you're going to get from it, but because you are eager to serve what God, you know, uh, serve God. You know, if you're doing something because you of getting some kind of reward, then I would suggest you're probably doing it from the wrong motivation. Now, you know, if you're, we also know if someone is full time working for the church, we know that I know there's biblical precedent all the way from the Old Testament right through that that a worker is worth his wages. And the church, you know, the 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 the, the should the church and the other things should provide for for them, for their needs and stuff. So, but it's not like in some places where you know you think like where they just want big money, big 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 money. And I, I don't, you know, I'm not coming unless I get this much of money. Wow, that's um, you know, that's uh, God save us from that kind of attitude. But do it from a right attitude. Attitude is always the most important thing. You know, we've seen some high-profile leaders uh, fall in recent years in, in the church. And I think maybe it's because they perhaps believe some of their own publicity, maybe because they, they maybe take their eyes off of Jesus and getting so busy that they just do that. And that's a, that's a really easy thing to do. I can identify with or I can see how people can get so busy, so full of the importance of ministry that they forget who they're serving. We always need to make sure that we keep our lives in perspective, serving Jesus, spending time with him in his word, in prayer, and doing all those things. This is why things like today are so important. So if you aspire to be a leader, don't do it because of something you aspire to, but do it willingly, do it not grudgingly, um, not for what you're going to get out of it, but because you want to serve God. That's a great attitude for doing anything, whatever you do. Do it because you want to serve the living God. You want to please him and you won't go far wrong. Listen, take care. God bless. I'll see you again tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.